up, what up? I'm Jonathan. What up, what up, what up? It's your boy Jay. And welcome back to Retro Renegades. Yeah. How you been, sir? I've been good, man. I've been good. You know, it's been it's been uh it's been some time. I'm sorry, I'm just muting the phone and everything. Don't want don't want people don't want I people already uh, I already did that before we started. Oh, you know. Give me one moment. I'm sorry, I should have done this before we started. Oh, you switching chairs? That's square. The chair keeps squeaking on me. Oh yeah, it does. That's the squeaky chair, guys. I'm a, I'm a, cut all this out. <laughs> not me. I'm keeping all this in. I'll let it. I try not to cut as much as I can. I want to keep it as natural as possible. All right. Well, then I just had to change that chair because every time I moved, it would squeak on me, and yeah. I was like, "That's gonna be annoying." <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. So, um, how was your? It's been a, been about a week, couple weeks, man. How's every couple weeks been? It's been pretty good. Just just chilling, working, stressing, living. Ain't that the That's truth. just life, life. Yeah, pretty much. All right, so last night, you know, when you got in here, you said something. Uh, yeah, so, okay, so, uh, I don't know if you know, you you don't watch Buffy, right? You've never seen Buffy? No, I've watched Buffy. Okay. You've never seen Angel? I've never seen Angel. Okay, so on Angel, uh, there's a character named Charles Gunn. His last name is actually um, paying respect to James Gunn. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I thought it cool. But uh, the actor, J. August Richard, has started this... Um, the school for being a series regular. I haven't, I haven't done it because the price is kind of prohibitive. It's like two fifty. Mm-hmm. I was like, that's a little much for me right now. But yeah, yeah. I was like, I, I support that he's doing that. That's cool. But he he did a interview on his Instagram with uh, Don Cheadle. Mm-hmm. And love Don Cheadle. Yeah. So and they, they're just talking about acting. Yeah. Not just about like acting for television, but they talk about theater and then movies and the television and their career and. Uh, it was probably one of the most enlightening things from an actor's perspective I've seen mm-hmm. in a long time. So I, I was I wanted to talk about um, craft. We always talk about movies and stuff like that, but I thought we could talk about craft and different resources people can get if they're interested in learning more about craft. Because I, I think a lot of people get into this and they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> You're talking about getting into the acting and filming world, right? Yeah. 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 Because yeah. if you remember from our very first episode, John and I got to tell you a little bit about ourselves. Uh, go back and we'll drop it here. You know? and, and I think there's also uh, an unreleased episode where we got a little too into <laughs> the past. Yeah. Like, yeah. I might have called people out and then I was like, I don't want to put this out. <laughs> yeah. See, John John wants to avoid all the, all the transgressions. I'm like, F it. We here. We, but let's, I'm all about not trying to change the past, man. Like people did what they did. People do what they do. So, but I I do think, um, especially since I, I have, I'm not against film school, but I had a lot Mm -hmm. of bad experiences with film school and I don't think it's necessarily the best place to learn craft. I think that it has a lot of drawbacks. Now with, uh, Northlake. Name drop. That was me. Um, There's a reason my other podcast is called North Lake Survivors. <laughs> but like, so with North Lake, and, and, and that's the reason why I felt comfortable saying it, because you literally, your other podcast is called North Lake Survivors. So, we, you know, that right there, just in the name in itself, is already just feel like, oh, that's hell on earth. As, as You know, that's that's like the crystal lake of, you know what I'm saying? Um, but all jokes aside, you know, with North Lake is that just a film school? Or no, is it's that a community a, college. It's, a community it's, it's college. actually a community college. The first time I went to North, like I loved it. It was brilliant. Yeah, and I just went for but basic they also classes. Do, but they also do acting. But they as have well they, there, right? They, okay, so North Lake Theater. They have a theater department, and the theater department's actually pretty good. Um, I don't know if Alice still runs it, but I loved Alice. Name drop. Uh, she was the head of the department when I went there. Title drop. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the theater department, I really have no complaints of. They even let me film in their hell, which hell is below the stage. <laughs> and I, I, I shot like a little horror thing in there. It was fun. Yeah. Theater department was great. The film department, and I will say, the head of the department now, Ruska, brilliant teacher. I do love Ruska. Mm-hmm. He's inviting me back. I don't know if I want to go back and finish my degree because <clears throat> the trauma I have. Yeah. But the way it was run before was very problematic. 
um, I know people who were in the program before I did, and they actually have pretty good careers in the industry. Yeah. I have a friend who worked on um, Brightburn. Have you seen that? Wasn't that on Netflix? It's on Netflix now, but it was in theaters. It's yeah. like a Superman like kind of parody satire thing mm -hmm. about like a kid having all that power yeah he worked on that works on a lot of things um his sister's like a professional actress now she was in lost in space stuff mm -hmm. like that so like there are people who went to the program before i went into it who actually went on to make it into the industry and do yeah. things and they're cool people nice people <coughs> hard working so I, I don't i don't think that the program in and of itself was flawed it could just be they were very talented because they were yeah <laughs> Um, and I know a lot of people who made it. I know them, those two, and they're twins. So maybe it's just that family. It's really good. <laughs> but when I started the program, it wasn't too bad. And then the head of the department retired, had a big retirement ceremony. Everything was done. And it was like, oh, this is going to be interesting to what happens next semester. And then next semester, he was back. And everything went downhill. Mm -hmm. And I always suspected, and then I had it confirmed by students who were you know, close to him. He stayed because he had money problems and couldn't, like something happened at his house and so he had to come back. And it, he became very grumpy mm -hmm. and very like anti-students. And I'm intentionally yeah. not saying any names because I don't want to, you know. So the viewers would like a name drop. <laughs> no. No, I'm just messing. Um, I'm joking. No, I'm not. <laughs> I share this, I'm gonna have to make sure it doesn't share to him or anyone who knows because he's on my friends list. Um, but like there was there was a time when um my my friend had a death in the family and she was yeah. like after after review can I go to the funeral? Can I can I leave early to go to the funeral? Mm -hmm. she, the fact that she came to class at all, I was <laughs> like, you're better than I. Yeah. And his response was, if you feel like you have to. Like, such attitude and disdain. And it's like, her family member just died. And she yeah. still came to school. Yeah. Um, he critiqued one project. And then um, one of my classmates asked, like... Because uh, he basically just said, this sucks. And they were like, mm -hmm. well, how can it be better? Well, if you don't know, you shouldn't be here. And it's like, well, what are we paying you for? Like, if you're not going to tell us how to fix this problem, why are we giving you money? Yeah. That you're an educator. You're supposed to educate us. And if your education is, you suck, be better, that's not an education. That's what, I could do that in YouTube. You suck, be better. <laughs> and then, like, and then uh, one of the new teachers who came in, uh, her homework assignment for the class was like, oh, um, write, pick a, pick a topic, write an essay and turn that in. A topic about what, anything you want, just Go find a subject, write a paper about it, and then turn that in, and that will be your grade. And it's just like, well, so figure out something that interests me and then research it? I can do that on my own. Like, that's not a curriculum. Yeah. It, it became, I started to see that the people who were excelling were people who had interest in a particular field and were just doing what they wanted to do. And that the program itself wasn't providing any aid. Right. Um, <clears throat> I became president of the film club and every time I tried to do, I, I didn't, I didn't nominate myself. I was nominated. And then Did anybody voted. hear that brag? Well, at my, at my medical school, I was a 4.0 GPA ambassador of my school. So, you know, I was, I, I, you know, if we're throwing brags and flat, I was an ambassador you, you of the program. You asked about Northlake. I'm telling no, no, you no, what I'm, the I'm just messing with you, man. Relax, <laughs> relax, relax. So, but, but everything I tried to do. Yeah. I was stopped. Like I wanted to do a film race. Right. I wanted to do uh, a Big project with the entire department. All of those things were squashed because we didn't have the resources. Yet when, not the head of the department, this was another guy in the department. Um, but he ran the club and he ran the treasury department. would always tell me, we don't have the funds for it. Mm -hmm. I was like, but we're fundraising, we're doing this, we're doing that. And all of that money would go to, and a big chunk of that money was earmarked for the end of the year so showcase. Fine. I, I enjoy the year, end of the year showcase. It's where we take all the best shorts mm -hmm. or skits or whatever that was made in the department and we air it in a movie theater. Yeah. Normally Texas Theater or the Angelica. And th so that's fun. I, I enjoy seeing myself on the big screen. I know other people do too. So it's it's enjoyable. Yeah. I'm glad we did that. 
But the rest of the money, I was like, well, this should be so that people can get hands-on experience. And they told us there was no money. And then they would spend money on new equipment and things like that. And I'm just like, well, why not just tell us that that's what you wanted the money for? And they were like, well, we can't get money from the, the, the school. We can't get money from the state. We can only get it from money we fundraise. They won't fund us. And yet when Ruska took over and I went to, um, he, through his guy I was working for, asked to see me. So I came in to talk to him and they had all new equipment. And I was like, how did you afford all this equipment? He's like, I just asked the school for it and they paid for all this equipment. And I was like, I was told the school said no. And he was like, well, when I asked for it, they said the department hadn't asked for any new equipment in years. So, you see, you see my issue? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I was told the school said no. And so all the money that we could have used to make projects, we could have used to put back into the program for the students to do things, I was told we didn't have the funds for it. We had to use it for this audio board or this single camera. But the second someone else took over the department, he got the mm. entire thing funded by the school to upgrade all the equipment. Yeah. And they never got that because they never asked. So they exploited the students to get that. The head of the department had a public access show that it was a requirement of us for our grade to work on. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that seem bullshit? Yeah. This was supposed to be about the craft. Or this is very much just me ranting about my Northlake days. I know. <laughs> I know. I was, I, was like, I was like, should I cut him off or just let him keep going? <laughs> He seems very pent up and angry about it. So uh, I felt like, you know what? I, we're just going to label this one John's Therapy Session. All right? So that's going to be the name of this episode. This episode's <laughs> also not going on my Facebook. <laughs> uh, well, then what's the point of this episode? <laughs> I wanted to talk about crap. I don't know how we got out to North Lake. Well, we were, I was segueing <laughs> North Lake into the craft... And then you went on North Lake ass. So I, I, I don't know where we go with this one. Um, if he's not going to share it, I, I don't know where to go with this one. Because, John, you got you got balls to the wall, my guy. We're here. We're, we're, you spent 10 minutes on North Lake when I was just trying to segue into today's topic. Oh, John. Oh, North Lake bothers me. I'm sorry. I know, but. Okay. Point is, okay, fine. No, it's fine. I'll share. I'll just remove people from the post. <laughs> um, the, the point the point that I'm trying to make and got long rented, winded on my rant was that the program didn't provide a lot of things that mm -hmm. are necessary to learn. And I remember asking um, the head of the department, I was like, why don't we teach people? Because I find it on my sets that people don't know their role. And I think that's a problem. And so I asked him, like, why don't we, why don't we take part of this? I gave the head of the department a note on um, curriculum. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's a little bold of me. I was like twenty at the time. But the thing is, I still think thirty-three-year-old John would still do the same thing. Oh, I would. So there, age got nothing to do with it. I'm about to be thirty-five. But thank you, I appreciate. You're 33. welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> I wasn't gonna tell you about your real age. Come on now, I was gonna leave him some mystery. Um, but I, I gave him notes, and he was like, yeah, you know, that's a good idea. And then he went in, and he told people the wrong things. We get famous. John's. I'm going to edit John's wiki page. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, that's that's not what the role is. Like, what are you doing? Like, I asked you to teach these people. <laughs> oh, it's stressful. Yeah, yeah. So a, a lot of people don't, in film school, I think, don't get the right information. North Lake, and I, I heard some of the teachers talking about this. Like our our job here is to teach people to enter in at the bottom mm -hmm. and work their way up and be crew. It's like everything there was structured to make you below the line, and there's nothing wrong with below the line. You, below the line people are important. You can't do a production without them. They are entirely necessary. PAs, y'all, the real ones. Remember that. But you. That's like, and if that's what you want to do, that's great. But that's not what everyone wants to do. And they, there's no teaching or guidance towards anything else. And also this idea of teaching everyone to be average, which is what their goal was. We want everyone to fit into this box of what it can be. Mm -hmm. And it's like, but average doesn't do anything. 
no no one sits there and be like, hey, that was a really average filmmaker. Let's let's see more of their average work. Yeah. You gotta teach people to excel. And the only people excelling were people who were doing their own things. And I think that's that's a problem with the program. And I don't know if it's just exclusive to the school I went to or if that's more of a school problem in general. But I do think that it's maybe not necessarily the best place to get your information from. Um, mm-hmm. On a previous episode or the episode, a couple of episodes ago, I mentioned Script Note Podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, and Craig Majin, you think I go on rants. That dude, dude who did The Last of Us, your favorite show. He, he goes on rants about film school, about how all it does is destroy people. <laughs> Which I can understand, you know, and, and, and this is coming from me who has no film background whatsoever. Like I, I immediately, what I did was, is I got into music and then I picked up a camera because I wanted to shoot my music videos. And then I found out, even though I was really decent at, I was average at music, I really enjoyed the camera. And yeah. so, you know, I just picked up the camera and really started shooting my own stuff. And it was it was horrific. I didn't understand the 180 rule. I didn't understand anything. You know, I was just, you know, in editing. I, was, I wasn't I was doing quick cuts or jump cuts. I was just, oh, you know what? Let's well, you should this. avoid jump cuts unless you know, you're going for like a stylistic. Thing. I was. You know, there was this video where I was going for a stylistic jump cut. And it just, I, I, it just, it looked absolutely horrific because a jump cut when it's not used correctly just takes you out it's of jarring it. yeah it's very jarring but now but see now i know that but you know <laughs> like back then but you know and i understand what john's saying is you know um how you know i think film school is a bust and that's my opinion i think it's a bust because as someone and this is my point as someone who has no film school experience no filming experience besides making my own film I just feel like I learned so much more being around the other people and networking and, and picking their brain, like John here, for instance, like, um, you know, several other people. So, you know, I just think it's unnecessary. I mean, maybe a, maybe a degree will get you into the right rooms. Maybe. I don't know. I, I do think, though, the, 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 the thing I will give film school mm-hmm. is it gives you access to two things that I think are important. I don't think it's necessarily access to a room. Because there were stories from North Lake. I never went and took well, the class, but there were stories Lake, about being put into a room but, and it working against you. But that's my thing. Like North Lake, I've I've never heard of North Lake. It's a community college. Area. But see, that's my point. Like North Lake isn't big enough to get somebody in the right room. I'm talking about you know uh, what's that one on in Florida um, that everyone goes to who's in filmmaking and gaming and everything like that. Oh, the one that's on Universal Studios, the you, Dave School. Huh? huh? The Dave School does does video effects and then working on games it's, it's on the universal lot uh what is the name of that school it's the day school no it's it's not the name of the school um one second full sale for like full hold sale on, hold on give me one second you can talk. Yeah. Like Full Sail University. Like Full Sail University, I hear all the time. You know, I've even got a few friends who are going to that school, and they say it's probably the best learning experience they've ever had, and this and this and this. And to me, Full Sail just seems like... Digital animation and visual effects school. The Dave School is a school in Florida that yeah. teaches video game and... Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Well, I was referring to Full Sail because it's the most... But you said video games and stuff like that. Yeah. So those are both schools in Florida that teach the same thing. Yeah, but Full Sail is more notable because it's bigger. Every, You know, I mean, and to be fair, a lot of... Um, to be fair, though, a lot of people in the Dave School ended up in Marvel movies and video games. Well, so a lot that, of people from Full Sail ended up on a lot of Marvel movies. I do like that we're arguing over which school's better. We didn't go to I don't. I don't. <laughs> but no, 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 no. I'm just saying, like, to to the point of view of, like, maybe going to one of those schools, yeah. we, you know, would have been better because maybe then they could have put you in the right rooms than, than North Lake. North Lake is a community college, and... Pro- they could probably get you into a commercial for a they, local They tax. get you into the rooms of local places. That's why I said a local tax office, you know, who needs something done. But, <laughs> but they don't have connections with Funimation. And if you're going to work in film in Texas, where are you going to want to work with Funimation? <laughs> I don't know. I, it couldn't be me. But I, um, the, the, the one thing that film school does give you is access to people 
and equipment. Mm -hmm. When I was starting out, I I had a flip cam. I don't know if you know what a flip cam is. I know what a flip cam is. I, that's, that's what I was filming my early stuff on. And then all of a sudden, at Northlake, I had access to 4K, like cinematic cameras mm -hmm. and real lights. And it does let you play around with equipment that when you're starting out, you can't afford on your yeah. own. And then you meet other people who want to do this. The problem is the further along you go in it, the more people get beaten down into submission. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you got to you gotta get in there and then immediately just start doing whatever you want to do. Don't care about the grades. Don't care about the degree. Use their equipment and then make whatever you want to make. Yeah. That's That to me, if I could do film school over again, that is what I would do. I would just go in and then just rent out the equipment and do whatever the hell I wanted to do and then not care about the grade. Trying to play their game is a, a fool's errand. But using their resources to set yourself up for success, that is what you got to do. Can you tell me a rough estimate about how much your uh, college was in? I you don't have to be exact. You know. I, I owe student loans like 23 grand. So. <laughs> but you see... But, but I also went to university, and a lot of that is from university as well. So just from Northlake? I don't know. So hypothetically, 23 grand, we'll just split it in half. We'll say about what, 13 grand? Uh, probably less than that, but yeah, yeah probably but, like ten. Okay, about ten grand. You could have bought a four K camera and everything yourself with that. I'm just saying. I, I couldn't have though because that wasn't my money. Was that it, was, it was money I borrowed yeah. from them. To uh, student loans are a scam. Fucking scam. <laughs> Fuck you, student loans. You know, I, I do like that we take we take people just out of high school who have no real understanding of finances because we don't teach it in high school. And then we give them the biggest loan that carries throughout their entire life that you can't you get can't, rid of. You can't. You can't. And it's and then and then we're like, well, you guys should have been more responsible. We're like, well, who the fuck gave a loan to a child who can't pay it off? How's that responsible? My student loan started at twenty thousand, and now I'm down to seventy five hundred, and I've just stopped. I'm like, fuck it. You've you've gotten more than enough out of me. I it's got... it's predatory. Like on on its surface, it is just predatory. Yeah. Um. That's that's a whole other thing. But. Yeah, <laughs> this this podcast is all over the place today, boy. John, you everywhere, man. It's because Northlake. Northlake gets me heated and, and mad. I think you came today for a therapy session. <laughs> that's what I. That's what I really think. And I'm fine. I'm okay to give you your therapy session, man. This is your outlet. You know what? We'll call this one John's outlet. That's what it is. <laughs> is Jay, I'm the interview. I'm the interviewer today. I I'm just gonna be the interviewer. So. Oh, uh, so when um, it does give you access to people yeah. and if you use it correctly and I, I did it because at the time I didn't really it wasn't towards the end that I was just like, oh, I'm just going to do what I want. And then I got into an argument with the head of the department and I just walked out. <laughs> I remember in class, he was like, where are you going? Oh, I just left in the middle of class. And I was like, well, he called one of my actors fat in front of the entire class. And I was just like, who does that? You're a grown ass man, and you're insulting someone. I, I was like, I can't. It, I, you know, insulting their parents. It's it's that's different. You know, when you're in school and these kids are coming to learn, you don't insult your cast or your ki or your students. Like on film sets, I have a specific way I want my characters to look. So yeah, I don't. I do say, but I'm nice about it. I don't say no fat people. I just say whatever. I need this character to be average build. Yeah. And so, but I don't say no fatties or no big women, you know, or no, no chunky monkeys, you know, nothing like that. But, but you're, you're a grown man insulting a 18, 19 year old kid yeah. in front of a class. In school. There was no need for it. Zero. Yeah. And so I just, I was like, I'm done. I just walked out. I was like, I'm done. I walked away, never went back. And it just, cause I wasn't getting anything out of it. Yeah. And to your point, what I learned most from was uh, in one of my early classes, I met this man, Larry Stanley, um, does like a bunch of Christian videos now. It's pretty cool mm -hmm. stuff. Documentaries I worked on. Um, but he invited me on to... We don't do plugs if we're not being paid. Yeah, we do. No, we don't. That's all we do. It's no, plugs. We don't. <laughs> <laughs> if we're not getting paid. I got paid from him. It counts. I didn't get paid. <laughs> I didn't get paid. No plugs. <laughs> so... Um, but he brought me on the yeah. set of a, a Christian short he was uh, working on called The Gospel of Thomas. 
And I came on as, I think I was like a grip, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And um, there's this dude, Raymond Montoya, uh, Montoya Media. Uh, we, we don't name drop. I'm going to promote my friends. We're not going to promote, man. <laughs> if they want a promotion, I need to see a $20 bill. Nah, I'll, 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 I'll promote it, my friends. No. Montoya Media. You don't see me promote <laughs> I don't promote because promote I, your friends. Why would I? Why? Why? Because well, they're your friends. And you're trying to I, build a community. I, I promote Blue Roof. That's what I promote. He promotes Overload Productions because we're in this. If you're trying to build a community, you gotta build the other people in the community. Man, look. <laughs> no, all jokes aside. All jokes aside. I would I would argue though that Montoya Media and Slow Row, that's Larry's company, has directly benefited Overload because I learned so much from them on those sets, things that I have brought to your sets. <laughs> it's all jokes, man. But like like Raymond, he took me under his wing. That dude taught yeah. me. I learned more over a week um, working and living with them than I did in the entirety of my school experience. Because mm-hmm. we, we rented this place on a golf course in Louisiana. It was nice. Yeah. Um, and so I just lived there for a week working on this short. Mm-hmm. And I learned so much in that week. More than I've learned in school, anything like that. So if you can get in a situation like that, that is what you need. Like, Indie World is mostly shot on weekends. It's, it's the truth of the matter. All mine were shot on weekends. Because it's everyone has real jobs. Everyone has a life that they can't get away from. But and if, no budget. And but if you can get on, if you can get yourself on a set that that is a a job that is um, six days a week, all day. If you can immerse <laughs> yourself in that world, you will learn more in that short amount of time. Then you will ever learn. That's why I know you don't like film races, like the concept of like rushing to do it. We've we've had conversations about film races. You were like, I don't know, like it just seems forced. But I was and, also like amateur, like it, yeah. That was before I finished my first film, and yeah. I think right now, I mean, if you were th- say, hey Jay, we're gonna do a film race. All right, fuck it, let's do it. There's there's nothing more beneficial. What comes out of it might not be great, but that being forced. Everybody forced to essentially live together for a weekend and just do something Mm -hmm. changes the way you look at the production, changes the way that you think about everything. It's so beneficial. I mean, I'd like to try it. It's something, you know, um, like I said, now that I've gr- I'm different, right? Now, yeah. I, th- I feel like my filming style is... Like, definitely, definitely. And, and so, we did have this conversation when you were still, like, the beginning stages of the mogul. Yeah, so I think, you know, put me... I'd like to give it a shot. It's it's definitely worth it. I'm, I'll look into it. It's, it's fun, man. Like, it's stressful. You won't sleep. Um, you'll probably want... <laughs> Who sleeps anyways? You'll probably want Monday off because Monday will just be sleeping. Oh. This is my job right now, so, <laughs> and I and I do this once every couple of weeks. So, <laughs> like, <laughs> um, but it it does it does change the way that everything works. Um, it just it there's something about living film. It was Bradley who who bashed film film races. Was it? Yeah. Name drop. <laughs> oh, I have you on fiber. Why do you keep doing that? Sorry about that. Mm. See, I turned mine on silent. It, it is on silent. Mm. I don't know why I keep. Mm. I thought I had it on silent. I guess I don't vibrate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to run over it though. Hold on. Put it. Over there. Yeah, put it in a safe spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know my fat ass. Okay. Um. But speaking of film races, though, this episode is not even about this. This episode is North Lake. This is gonna be titled North Lake. <laughs> Oh, like I said, I, this is no. I'm titling this one John's Therapy Session because <laughs> I'm just interviewing. I'm the I'm just I'm just a I'm, I'm just here. I'm I'm just here for this episode. I'm I'm just so this spot doesn't look vacant. <laughs> That's it. So I'm just chilling. So um, what was I gonna say? Okay, so me and uh me and my my partner McKendra, we got so fed up with how North Lake was was treating people and how they mm-hmm. were doing things that. We gotta have her on the podcast one of these days. So we we decided we were gonna enter a film race to show the school that we could do it without it. Our whole thing was we we're gonna do this film race without any help from the school. We'd borrow some equipment, 
and we would rent out a building that wasn't part of the film program. So we rented out a separate room from the school. By rent it out, we just asked them if we could use it overnight, and they said, yeah. <laughs> and then rented out some equipment. We're like, we're not getting any TA help. We're not getting any help from the film club, from anyone else. And so we, we were setting it everything up. We were paying for everything. We were doing all this. And then the school found out. And they were like, oh, we're entering. And they poached our, one of our camera operators. They started poaching our people. And it became a battle. Like, they were in, we were both in the same building. We were in this room. And they were in the main studio over here. And it became so contentious. <laughs> Just like, our film's going to be better than yours. And I, I just, I love, like, so uh, one of my one of my longtime collaborators, that was the first time I worked with him. He's been on everything since. <laughs> we ended up at the end of the night drinking at the campus because we were so stressed out. <laughs> Almost got into a fist fight with somebody there. <laughs> it, it, was, it was a very contentious thing. But they never even finished their project. We got honorable mention. We didn't place. Mm -hmm. We got honorable mention. And the people who came in third came up to us and were very like, oh, yours was so great. You guys should have placed after us. So it's like, well, you were third. Like, there was no one out to you. <laughs> <laughs> it was the thought that counts. So, like, you know, it's like, it's like, you know what? Here, here's, your, here's, your, here's your lightly less bronzer medal. <laughs> but I do love that they never finished. Because all the shit they talked. And it's like, huh. You ain't shit. <laughs> Man, oh, uh, this is fun. Fun days, though. I wouldn't trade it for the world, but I don't think you get a lot out of it. Yeah, but you do meet people, and that is useful. Because otherwise, I mean, <laughs> just doing it. How many useful people have you really met? <laughs> I'm gonna be real. Like I, I doing. I've been doing local film for four years now. Um, no. Oh shit, I have. God, I'm trash. <laughs> um, for about three, three and a half, four years now, and honestly, I haven't met anyone say they went to film school, uh, doing what doing what we do, and and I haven't met anyone. Everyone's just picked up a camera and just kind of doing, doing their own thing. But I, but you know, um, I do think that's kind of been the downfall of our industry of what we're doing and that's and that's coming from me and and, and let me let me explain because i know you've already got something in the in the in the <laughs> shotgun there um because i was talking to a friend of mine on facebook as well uh you know who is a composer um uh and he said he's he's hanging it up he said um working in our you know he no one wants to pay for, for his uh composer because he all he wants to do is make music for video games and make music for film that's all he wants to do with his yeah. life and no one's paying for it everybody wants something on the free everybody wants this and this and this and leading into my next topic i had a discussion with this australian filmmaker who commented on the post as well and we were talking about film and he's like, you know, one of the he even said one of the biggest downfalls is the fact that anyone thinks they they could pick up a camera and shoot a film, or shoot a shoot a short because the fact of the matter is is they they don't understand there's an art behind it, and 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 a lot of the art has left, this this film this film world and it's it's I, I sat back and look at it and I look at various um, local films that have been done here. And and I and I do agree. I feel like there's no more art. I feel like just everyone picks up a camera and thinks they can do what we vision we can do. Like I feel like I have a natural eye for what I want. You have a natural eye for what you want. But then there's people who just, you know, use a, you, you know, we go out and spend all this money on good equipment and try to make ourselves look as professional as possible on a budget. And then there's people are running around with an with an iPhone twelve, and it's it is frustrating to that extent. But but I will say, have you ever seen the Tangerine? Mm -hmm. It's a indie movie that w I believe won an Oscar, and it was shot, shot on, on an iPhone. Yeah, I have heard about it, but I haven't seen it's it. It's actually pretty good. But my but that's my thing. But that was that was somebody with creative art. 
Yeah. That was somebody. Well, my, was, my, the point I was making with that is it's not about the equipment. It's about the storytelling. Right. Right. But that's the thing. Like, I just feel like there's no more stories. Left. Like, no one's coming out with anything original. And that's probably me as well. People look at my, my stuff and they're like, oh, that's not very original. Well, there's there's different issues at play here. Yeah. So the, estab- the, the problem with, like, Hollywood, like, official Hollywood and all the stuff coming out of there, is that the people in charge aren't filmmakers anymore. They're yeah. Wall Street guys. They're businessmen. And so they're looking at the bottom line and what sells this new IP or this IP we've had for 30, 40 years that everybody knows. So the fact that art has been taken out of the business entirely in in Hollywood has a problem. So you still have filmmakers who are bringing art to what they do. You still have like, you have people who have enough name power and recognition that they can still do what they want. Yeah. But that is far and few between. And going back to what I started this with, uh, with Don Cheadle, he was saying, like, part of the problem is, he was like, um, going back to that, you have to be willing to get fired thing. He was like, um, back back when I was starting out, I could take these risks and take these chances. And there was more of a place to fail and build yourself up. But the people in charge of the pocketbooks now don't want to take any risk. They're, what is the safest bet I can make? What is who who has the most followers? Which is an insane way to pick a a um, actor. Mm-hmm. You'll be uh, a million people follow you. Okay, it's like that doesn't mean you can act. That doesn't mean you have any talent. Yeah. And so he he was making the point like it's it's arguably harder now to make it than it has been at any other time, because the people in charge don't care about the art. Yeah. So you have to care that much more. Because like. If I have to see The Rock in another movie, you oversaturate. Like <laughs> you over you 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 talentless oversaturated chump. I don't agree Jesus. with that. <laughs> it's the same thing every movie. I do. I did see this meme that was like four pictures of The Rock in the same outfit in the jungle. It was like, believe it or not, these are four different movies. That's what I'm saying. It's a, that's my only problem. It's like, it's it's the all right. Let's let's be real. I I do enjoy The Rock. I like The Rock. But I just I'm I'm tired of seeing the rock, you know, and that that goes back to you what you're saying. Like he has the star power to pretty much do whatever, do whatever he, wants he wants and be it. whatever he and be in whatever he wants, like Black Adam. And so, like I say, it's just it's it's it is harder nowadays to even though we have more resources to get as big as we can. YouTube, Spotify, Apple, the internet, you know, we have more resources. But the thing is. Every, how do you set yourself apart when everyone else is doing what you're doing? Yeah, and it, it has become oversaturated. Like mm-hmm. it, like you said, like there's just too many people doing it, and you democratized art, and then you have all so you have all these people doing it, and a lot of people are just doing whatever. And the fact that it is a craft has gone away from it. Mm-hmm. Um, we've built a society where going the traditional job route is less and less lucrative <laughs> since since the lockdown every prices of everything have gone up but pay has not really matched it so people are like oh well these people are talking on a computer and they're making a killing so now everyone's rushing to that thinking it's a get rich quick scheme i do think that on a long enough timeline people are going to realize the number of people who are making a killing doing this is so astronomically small and generally are the people who have something actual, like a valid to say. And a lot of that will fall away. I think right now it's so big because they see it as this untapped market, which is insane because it's entirely tapped. It's almost dry, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. but that's, that's what it is. It's people are like, I-, I can't go work a normal job and pay to support. So let me do this. Yeah. And it's, it's an alternative way to bring in income. And so everyone's flooding that market. And like if you, look at, if you look at YouTube when it started, which was skits and little shorts, and mm-hmm. it was a lot of creativity. The glory days. And then you look at it now, and it's mostly vlogs. I watched a lot of bum fights. <laughs> Don't support that at all. That's, I support, that's, that shit was hilarious. That's fucked up. And they're human beings. <laughs> that's immoral. Entertainment, man. Entertainment. At the end of the day, they got paid. 
At the end of the day, they got paid. That's exploitation. You know what? We're all exploited. Jobs exploit us. What do you mean? <laughs> Careers exploit us. Like, what do you mean? Okay. We're all exploited, John. <laughs> I don't support bum fights. I, 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 uh. I just said I watched them as a kid. That's all I said. I never said I fucking, you know, threw my, threw my donations in. I didn't. I just, hey, I watched it. It was entertaining. But I also watched Kimbo Slice. Kimbo Slice was very entertaining to watch. Backyard fights. And Kimbo was, rest in peace, Kimbo. See, that's a shout out I, ex- I expect. Um, that was uh, like backyard wrestling stuff? No, it was actually backyard brawls. Oh, so okay. basically two underground, um, you know, wannabe fighters would go to a, someone's backyard and just box it out. And then whoever gets knocked out loses. It's a bum fight. I don't have a problem with that one. Yeah. Bum fights I have a problem with because there's the financial desperation. I feel like it's a lot more We're all financially predatory. desperate. The, but don't jobs come after us? But, and, but you're, I mean, you're going we, after the, arguably the most vulnerable. I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty vulnerable for some money. <laughs> <laughs> I, there's a difference. It, I, it's, it's, it's an agree to disagree thing. I... At the at the end, I I do agree with you. Say they are the most vulnerable. All jokes aside, like you you, you kind of in a mood today, <laughs> man. I'm trying to bring you out of it. I'm trying to bring you out of it. But um, you know, I I I, I see what you know. All jokes aside, you know, bum fights weren't look. I looking back on my younger self, you know, it's yeah. like ah oh, shit. I probably shouldn't have gave that so many views. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> but 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 at the same time, I was a kid. I I enjoyed what I enjoyed, but because I was also watching, it was the it was the heyday of, of YouTube. YouTube. You know, yeah. you had the bum fights, you had the backyard brawls, you had the but backyard now, now it's just vlogs, vlogs, F- a vlog, a vlog, a day in the life vlog. Oh my god! Were people playing video games? <laughs> Twitch. I I don't get, I don't get the hype. Um. I just I I don't like I, I I do miss the creativity, <clears throat> and I do wish we had something like a young YouTube, and it's not TikTok. Mm, TikTok 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 is God dang it! Why can't I why can't I say this? Word? Am I having a stroke? <laughs> <laughs> TikTok is dead, man. I'm 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 you know I get on Tik when I first got on TikTok it was Musically. Yeah. And so uh, I was enjoying it. It was dope, man. It was just a, a fun place to vibe. Now I get on TikTok and it's just world event, world event, world event, uh, live, a, a large... NPC. Have you seen those NPC lives? Where people are pretending to be... Comp- I, I, it oh my me God, insane. My friend dude. sent me that and she was like, the world is over. Uh, I do think, though, that um, TikTok becoming more like that is a direct result of Twitter dying and Elon Musk changing the way twitter works Mm -hmm. because twitter was like a large part of it was news and a lot of those things have left there like that's where people were getting information was from twitter and after twitter kind of changed the way it works that migrated a large part to tiktok yeah so tiktok becoming that is twitter die (laughs) twitter does suck now if you do you ever get on twitter I, used, I never got on Twitter before. I, I used to get so many views on everything I post on Twitter. Now I get nothing because I refuse to pay. Well, that's the thing with Twitter, man. I hated I hated all the, the bullshit. Like, I'm not a person who follows celebrities because, uh, you know, at the end of the day, what a celebrity does for my life is nothing. I'm not a person that follows, you know, I, I follow world events attentively and so I can adjust accordingly. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's not all I want to see. I want to, I want to laugh and have fun and I want to, I want to, but that's why I love TikTok so much as I pull it up, you know, back when it was musically and when, in the, in the early days of TikTok, it was all about skits and funny shit and stuff. Like and that. even there, it's not really that anymore either. No, it's not. I'm just like, man, I'm so. We need something new. And I, I hate vertical film. It drives me insane. Oh, yeah, you're talking about that TikTok format? It, it, it drives me insane. It, it's terrible. YouTube shorts are the same thing, and it also just like, it's yeah. like horrible. It's not supposed to look like that. Mm-mm. Making everything for the phone. I, I there's, there's something that media should be enjoyed on a, as large a screen as possible, mm-hmm. not on a tiny thing that you hold in your hand. Could that be us showing our age? 
as retro renegades? <laughs> it could be. It definitely could be. I just... Are we not getting with the times? I think, it though, it, it goes back to... I, I guess. I guess, but I don't think that... Necess- I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. Because vinyl are more popular now than they have been in a long time. Well, and nostalgia is always going to be real. Nostalgia yeah, everything, Everything's going to always come back around. I do think, though... I, I do think right now we're in this... I think we as a society were heading somewhere and then COVID hit and we were forced into lockdown and I think it changed everything by elevating the timeline. Mm -hmm. Forcing people to be locked in their houses for like a year and change. Was it it like a year and a half, two years? I didn't stay in the house so I don't know why everybody kept saying where they were were in lockdown. (laughs) I I wasn't locked down for shit. I was still going places. Well, you were also uh, central... You were you were a nurse, right? Yeah. Um, fuck it. I didn't give a shit though. <laughs> I was still filming in lockdown, so like it, it. You know, everybody was scared about COVID. I wasn't. I was like, gang, gang, let's do this. Regardless, I I, I shut down everything during COVID. But um, regardless, like it, it did. The world shut down. Businesses shut down. I profited so much during COVID. I pro- man, I made so much money on on family pictures. COVID changed my life financially as well. I'm in a better place now than I was then. Just the unemployment. That unemployment gave me the means to like but COVID, start my own business. But COVID gave me gave me the means to start my own business. I mean, yeah, that's of course, what I'm saying. Of course, of course, now it's not because everybody's back to everybody's got no time anymore. But, but the the thing that I'm trying to trying to get to is like everything shut down and it forced people more into isolation. Yeah, and so people are more. Movie theaters haven't really bounced back. All these different things that were kind of slowly going the way of the, the well, dinosaur, I think all of that that timeline sped up. Well, yeah, because we proved that voodoo can I can I can do theater at home with voodoo, like you know, as a filmmaker, you know I don't I don't think it's. It's such a fine line to walk. Like, do I get with the time or do I stay with the dinosaur? The dinosaur being the theaters. And so, you know, it's, it's what are you going to do, you know? I disagree. I think what you're talking about is a fad. I think that it was, it's going to be dominant for a time. Yeah. And then I think it's going to go away. And people, art is supposed to be communal. And treating art like it's a solitary experience I believe is a mistake. I no, I agree, but at the same time, that's where the world is going, and so you're trying. And so once again, are you trying to hold on to the past because that's what you love, or are you not allowing the future to be what they are? They love because that's what you have to separate it, John. It's not about you. It's I, about the, I think people are making a mistake, and I, I think and they're it, gonna realize they're making a mistake. Anybody see the ego? <laughs> And yet he always says, I have the ego. I think people are making a mistake. <laughs> but thing is, John, people can't make mistakes when it's their choice. You know, like, they make this decision to to sit at home. Because me, personally, I hate theaters. I hate sitting next to people. I hate, I hate sitting next to someone who's going to chew loud. I hate somebody who's dropping popcorn on the floor. These badass little kids. I don't like theaters. So having the, the option... And that's what it is. Having the option to watch, like Black Adam, I didn't watch it in theater. Black Adam, I watched it in the comfort of Voodoo um, at my home where I rented it. Did I spend a little bit more for that ticket? Yes. But at least I didn't spend $30 on a box of fucking sugar babies. I didn't spend $40 on a Coke. I didn't spend $50 on a large popcorn. And I didn't spend $120 on some fried pickles at the Alamo. So... But you can't you can't tell me that watching a movie on your TV is the same experience you get being in a room full of other people riding that roller coaster. I thoroughly enjoy not being in a room full of other people who stink, <laughs> fart. You know, I'm I'm cool with my farts. I'm cool with my wife's farts, but I ain't trying to be up in the I, me personally like don't get me wrong. When we did the mogul, the premiere, yeah, that was a fever dream. It was a bunch of people. I sat in the back corner, hiding my face, 
throughout the whole hour and ten minutes, hiding my face, because how many people felt this? One hundred and fifty. Yeah. It was about one hundred and sixty-three. One hundred and sixty-three people filled out this um, movie theater. movie theater to watch something. John, I did. John, uh, assistant directed, and and that we came together to do. And then, um, of course, John actually, you know, you were one of the one of the. Um, Probably like fourth on the call sheet. Yeah, right? fourth on the call sheet. You know, you were pretty high on the list. Um, and so doing that was great. I enjoyed that because I got to see how people reacted to everything I've written. You know, I, I got to see if a joke hit or not. Like, what was that joke you said you still can't believe was a hit really well? I can't remember. I can't remember. But, like, uh, you know, John didn't think this joke was going to hit. I thought it... it, And and then it hit. It hit. I I understand both sides of the perspective. I really do. But as a... Someone who who does not like... I'm very antisocial. I don't like going out places. I don't like... You know, I just... I'm not a fan. I want to do my job and come home to my wife and kid. And, And unfortunately, that's how society is going. And Yeah. And I don't see that ending well. I mean, does it? <laughs> we're not going to end well regardless. <laughs> we, 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 it's, it is what it is, man. What are you going to do? No, I still, I don't think we have to go down dystopia. I think we could end up Star Trek. I think Star Trek is the future we can aim for. We don't have to be Mad Max. We don't have to be like... <laughs> we can get better. But we need to come together. And everyone going into their own bubbles. Part of the problem with this um, democratization of entertainment is that nobody has common... Um, what is what is it I'm looking for? Um, common references anymore. Like, pop culture has become so fragmented. There, there could be somebody who gets millions of views. Uh, Mr. Beast. I've never seen any of his videos. Dude's insanely popular. PewDiePie, never seen anything he's ever done. Dude's insane. Like, these people have more viewers than most network television. Mm -hmm. Never seen them. Like, it's insane that pop culture has become that fragmented. There's no commonality anymore. We live in the same country with people who have none of the same cultural references we do. That is odd to me. And I don't see how that ends well. John, just because we don't have the same cultural (laughs) references doesn't mean we're going to nuke each other. But cultural references are what form a society. When that breaks down, everything else breaks down afterwards. I don't have a problem. I mentioned The Office, and a lot of people have the same cultural references. The Office, fantastic. I bet you... I've never seen an episode. <laughs> that's because he doesn't watch good things. Like He watches stuff like Angel. Like Angel's dr- <laughs> I'm what you dark. <laughs> but, but the point is, like The Office, though, is also from from just before this Mm -hmm. like I'm I'm, I'm telling you man things are going to get progressively worse because we don't go to the movie theater I (laughs) (laughs) we're at 53 minutes man (laughs) alright with that being said we're gonna go ahead and (laughs) any last words Uh, let's give us legends alright guys catch y'all later Overload Productions